So here we go. Okay, so I've got some slides that I, I ran through the INOVA team uh, last week, and uh, I'm going to use those to kind of go through some talking points. I'd also say if there's any ANOVA team members that are on the committee involved with putting this together, if if you can raise your little virtual hand. Um, okay, okay. Oh, Aisha. Okay, here. Aisha, I'm going to promote you to panelist. You're the, you're the one that I was looking for. Um, so I just promoted you to panelist. So you can jump in with any, um, any, any wacky questions or anything that I can't answer. And you can also call me to the carpet if I make up something and it's not correct. Um, so um, Aisha, that's great. Aisha's here. Uh, she's working hard behind the scenes making all this happen. Okay, so as we all know, let's let's first just go through the who the the who what where and when. Okay, so what we've got is the uh Anova Post Acute Partner event. It's been a few years since uh this has been done and uh Anova's very excited to do um outreach with y'all and um as many of you remember, the previous events for the last few years, we're at the Fairview Park, or they were over at the Marriott across the Beltway. But this year, it's going to be March 13th from approximately 9.30 to 2.30 2 at the brand new Anova Center for Personalized Health Conference Center, which if you haven't been to, it's wonderful. Um, who's going to attend? Uh, these are going to be ANOVA team members from across the entire system, primarily including care management members, acute and ambulatory, nurse navigators, specialty provider groups like uh, palliative care and oncology. And the ANOVA team has been, you know, rallying their leadership to promote uh, attendance. So uh, I think we've got um, a decent amount of folks that signed up for this in advance, which is pretty cool. Um, and why are we doing this is to connect community partners to better serve the community of patients and staff. Okay. So now how are these team members getting there? Um, there are going to be, they, they can obviously walk across the street if they wanted to, uh, from Fairfax or they could drive their own vehicle, but to make life easier, um, the Innova team has set up shuttles from, Mount Vernon, Fair Oaks, Loudoun, and Alexandria that are going to go in two waves. One is a 930 drop off at, at the center, and then those folks will go back around 11, and then another is an 1130 drop off, and then those folks will go back at two. But And then there's ongoing shuttles for staff members from Fairfax. So this is just to kind of set the table for you all to kind of understand who's coming, how they're getting there, and kind of some of the timing that we might have. So now, um, I'll be sending this to you. So, you know, this right now, you probably can't navigate this map very well, but just so you know, um, if you can see my cursor, this is the conference center right here. And um, the two areas that we're gonna probably be as vendors, parking at is going to be first this open F lot that's right adjacent to the conference center. And then the other is um, an underground E lot, which is across the street. Um, and you're, you're going to get a lot more logistics on parking and things like that uh, as we learn more too, because remember, this is the first time that this event has been done in this space. So we're myself and the Innova staff, are, are learning as we go. So now this, take this with a grain of salt because this is probably gonna change. We discovered recently that there may be a loading dock, but um, regardless of whether there's a loading dock or not, regardless of whether we're gonna have you drop off and then park your car, the important thing that we wanna talk to you all about today is really thoughtfully thinking about what you're taking and strategically packing it so that if you do 
have to pull up here and unload your car that we can either set it aside for you to come back and take it upstairs to the conference room or if we have hand trucks where we can have you guys drop stuff off and then we can transport it up there but this is kind of you know right now we've got you know three weeks so in three weeks i'm hoping that we can all think about how we're going to pack for this event and what we're going to get printed and you know what tablecloth we're going to have and uh and and go from there okay so now this is a floor plan but this is not the floor plan for the event but i i want you all to kind of get a sense uh, for if you haven't been to this event here, this is the exterior. And so that this uh, oval shaped um, building is what you see in this sort of oval shaped foyer right here with the men's and women's room. room. And this is on the second floor. So you'll either take stairs or the elevator and you're gonna come up and you're gonna, you're gonna check in somehow as a vendor and then we're hoping to map out the layout of these two rooms in advance so that you automatically know that your table is in this room and it's num table number six and so it's a quick check-in you can get in there and set things up um the the reason that i say that these these vendor tables this this sort of mock-up is um is not accurate is because we're considering exploring having the tables around the perimeter um that way if somebody had a banner or something like that it wouldn't necessarily be blocking your um the adjacent tables access so that's that's what we're thinking about um the uh there's going to be quite a few nova partners and they're going to be uh in this in in this separate area and then one of the highlights of the day to get attendees is that there's going to be lunch and so um that's going to be available over over here but um it's really a a, a really cool space and uh should facilitate a, a great event now this is not how the tables are going to be set up but the reason that I created this slide is I wanted you to see what the tables look like at the Innova Center because they're a little bit different than your traditional healthcare expo in that they're a little bit smaller. And as you can see, they've got rollers on them. They can be moved around. There's, these are more classroom tables. That being said, they still accept a tablecloth the same way the other ones do. But um, if your tablecloth if you have a tablecloth and it's designed for bigger than a six by two foot uh, table, it's not a bad idea to have some little, like maybe some chip clips or something like that, um, that you could uh, tighten it up uh, if you feel like you might have a little bit of slack on a six by two foot table versus a six by four foot table. Okay. Um, now, um let's uh, i'm going to get through these and then we're just going to answer questions and that that'll probably carry us through so so one of the things that we wanted to do is help coach you guys on how to make an impact at this specific event and remember like we all go to health fairs we all go to senior expos this is a lot different this is not going to be 2000 older adults coming into an expo center this is going to be um, hopefully several hundred uh, potential professional referrals, referral sources that are all coming from the ANOVA system. So number one, the cool thing is you don't need to print a million documents, but number two, you can actually customize your experience and how you're going to be displaying and what you're going to be displaying at this event Um to cater to the to the professionals that are going to be attending, um, probably the easiest way to make an impact is to uh, is to get a custom tablecloth. And uh, these are just three designs here. 
I don't know if you y'all have shopped for tablecloths lately, but I'm blown away at the fact, that, you know, if you shop around and go on Amazon or what have you, you can get a tablecloth for, you know, under 200 bucks. That's really nicely designed. The, uh, the important thing is, is, is that if you don't have one of these and you want to order one, order it this week so that you can potentially get it by March 13th. Um, I want to remind y'all then, and Anova wants to remind y'all that for this uh, uh, event, and it may change in the future, but for this event, each vendor only has two employees that are allowed to attend. So pick your employees wisely. Um, I am going to set up a, a, a form so that you can let us know what uh, employees are going to be at your booth. And uh, if you fill that out, it's just going to make your check-in that easy, that much easier. So it's Cindy and George, and they check you off and you go to, go to your booth. But you only get two. So don't, we really don't want to be going through the thing where, you know, oh, I'm going to bring four of my team members. It's okay. We all need to network with case managers. No, pick your two best star employees and have them come. And that's going to be a, um, uh, a, a winning combination. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and uh, well, Dolores, you got a good question and I'm going to hold that. Let me just get through my my bullet points here. That's a really good question. Okay, so your branding, your content, um, you know, one of the things that as we're talking about picking up and dropping off uh, is, you know, the more efficient you can be with your six by two foot space and what you're bringing, the easier it's going to be for you, the easier it's going to be for, for, for us to help you get your booth set up, but also the easier it's going to be for the people that are coming through the, the expo. We've all been to these expos where there's a hundred different brochures sitting on a table. That's probably going to confuse the attendees more than it's going to help them. And uh, so just think strategic. Um, think about, you know, like, and reflect on kind of if you've worked with Inova team members and other hospitals, then really think about uh, what it is that your service and your product does to help these folks and, and the patients they're serving and try to sort of craft up your, your, your messages to address that problem that you're solving. Um, I always like to remind people, not just at this event, but every event that we go to, these can be exhausting. And what ends up happening is you go to an event, you meet a bunch of people, you're totally wiped out, you go home, you have a glass of wine, and you never follow up. And what I like to remind people of is, you know, think about like crafting your follow-up messages before you even go to this event. And then, you know, if you're following up with somebody, now you're just going in and you're making a few edits. And, uh, and but the most important thing is that if you talk to somebody, you know, they want to see a quick follow-up and, and, and uh, thinking about that in advance can help. Uh, practice. I know this sounds crazy, but I've been to too many events where um, a leader in the organization says, hey, you're going to go to the ANOVA event and nobody gives them guidance. Nobody gives them the opportunity to kind of practice how they would talk to the certain population that's going to be at that event. And it's it can be fun and it can really fine tune your marketing message. Um, and, um, let's see, uh, the, the other thing that we'd like to request is, is that we're not going to have, um, name tags for you. We're not going to get the little adhesive name tags. So figure out what you're going to do for your name tag and, uh, make sure that you got those ordered and, um, that you're, you've identified yourself because you want to be identified no matter where you're walking around this building, you got an opportunity to pop into and bump into a great referral source or a good professional connection. All right. Um, I'm not going to um, belabor this one, but uh, those of us who have been going to these events for many years can, most of us can tell you that we probably met 
some of our best referral sources uh, the, in the business that were also exhibiting at the same event uh, when there was a slow time or, you know, while you're moving in, you chat somebody up. And so be thinking about, you know, what is your game plan? Uh, you guys are going to see the list of all the vendors. If there's a vendor that's exhibiting at this event that you'd like to get to know, you know, uh, make an effort to, to sort of uh, plan that strategy out. Uh, but the most important thing, and we've all seen this happen, is, is don't decide to go over to Shady Acres Assisted Living while they're talking to um, an Inova staff member. Wait until things settle down or, you know, pop on by and say, hey, you want to get a glass of wine after this or something like that. Um, and just like you're thinking about your follow-up with the, um, the attendees of this from Inova, Think about how you're going to follow up with any interesting vendors that, that you meet uh, that you think could be beneficial to your organization. And I think that's it. Uh, or that's that's all I have on the, uh, whoops, that's all I have on the slide deck. So now um, I see that Aisha was answering a few questions, but let me... Um, let me take a look at, okay, so the um, Dolores asked, can you rotate employees? Some from someone from 10 to 12 and then somebody from 12 to two. And Aisha says, you can, you will only have two lunches reserved. We'll be handing out tickets to the vendors and the attendees. So um, uh, that's great. And so when, what, a, and I'm glad you asked that question, Dolores, because um, I'm going to create the um, table signup sheet. And what I'm going to do is basically at that time up sheet, it's going to say exactly what we've been saying. We want only two vendor, two attendees at the booth, but then um, I'll make sure that I've got an open-ended question that says that here's the two primary people, but then you could type in and say, uh, Cindy and George are going to be relieved by, you know, Ray and Skippy uh, at two. And we just have their names in there just so we can kind of keep track of this. And and obviously, you know, this is the first time that we're doing this at this event, the first time that we're doing it with this sort of planning schema. Um, you know, this will more than likely change at future events, but we got to start somewhere. And I think this will help keep things kind of organized. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, Aisha, since you're, I think you've got access to the mic, anything that you, um, if you want to unmute or is there any, is there anything that I missed or anything that you think that we should dive into? And then, uh, if not, we can take questions from the, the audience. Um, um, sorry, I'm just a little under the weather. Hi, everyone. Nice to virtually meet you. And I'll definitely see you all in person day up. Um, thank you all for being very responsive and uh, very proactive and reaching out. Any questions? Thank you again. Um, I just wanted to highlight uh, one minute of something that Steve mentioned, which is that um, employees will be shuttling in um from other locations some will be driving themselves so just to keep in mind that we might have two different waves of a lot of people um at different times so one first wave will be in the morning and then one a little bit later in the afternoon not super late in the afternoon like right before lunch like 11. um so we will have people coming in waves but we also do expect team members to walk by and come in as well um so you will see a flow of people throughout the the day um but otherwise, I think just keep in mind of space being a bit limited. Um, so just try not to bring such bulky items. We we are all for the marketing. We are all for the information and resource. Just be mindful of your neighbors is the best way to say. Um, and then I think that's about it. We are looking to have early setup available around between 8 or 8.30. We'll confirm more in the near future. Again, uh, we appreciate your patience. It's the first time we've been doing this after a long time and it's a new space. Um, and yeah, and then lastly, I'm just putting in a plug, please, if you have not already, 
yes, there will be chairs available. Um, yes, there will be chairs available. Thank you, Latasha. I was going to say, if you have not already, please fill out that uh, form from Steve to provide the correct, accurate information that needs to be provided in the resource guide, um, the most accurate as possible. If you do share the same parent organization, list all the locations you would want to be on that resource guide. Um, and yeah, and if you have any questions, I am the person who answers the emails for the Innova Post Acute Care Expo at innova.org. So please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. Okay, uh, great. And uh, I'm really glad that you reminded me to talk about the resource directory. I know that you all have um, received emails from me. I'm putting the link in if you didn't complete the form. Um, you can easily do it there and I'm going to share my screen because I'm just going to kind of give you guys an inside baseball on this is, is that, so here is the Google form that you need to fill out. And it, the goal is that we want this membership dire directory to be, or membership, this directory to be accurate and have information so that folks can contact you. But what, um, what you'll see is, is that here are the folks that have completed it, okay? And we know there's still some more hanging out there. The deadline is tomorrow. And what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take all that data and put it together. It, this is not gonna be in final form. It's gonna, we're gonna basically, we're playing around with it in spreadsheets. But um, once we start playing around with it in our graphic design program, it gets a little bit more complicated. So we're going to do a mock-up of sort of one way that this data may be organized. And we're going to email that out to all of you. And you got to look at this and you got to get us changes. And those of you who have signed up that didn't fill out the form, we're going to, we're just going to do the best that we can to, to add your name and your phone number and, and a contact, but it won't be information that you gave to us. It's going to be information that we we dug around for. So it's in your best interest to um, get uh, that form filled out. And now I don't want you all to think that this resource directory is going to be like, you know, another edition of Sourcebook because it's not even going to be close to that. The goal of this directory, because I, I've been to these events like this for the last 35 years. And here's one of the things that happens is, is that um, A, uh, Cindy is, oh, she's got three cases that she's got to handle and her colleagues are getting on the shuttle bus to go to the vendor expo. And she's like, I can't make it. Can you get me some stuff from the event? And what we want to be able to do is, is that whether somebody attended the event or they missed the event, is have an easy to read and access document that they can use all year long to say, oh, geez, who, what was that assisted living Shady Acres that I that I met at the vendor fair? Here, let me see where they are. Oh, that's the guy, George, that I talked to. Let me give him a call. That's our main goal. Because again, and, and again, this is, many of you have been to these events where, you know, Somebody's got a bag and uh, they just start throwing stuff in the bag. There's, you know, there's no way that they're going to read everything in that bag, but we're going to have this one document that's going to be fairly comprehensive around this event. And we're pretty excited about that. Um, and, oh gosh, Aisha, there, I, I had a thought. It was something, oh, giveaways and raffles. Um and Aisha, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, some of you were asking questions about giveaways and raffles and drawings from your table. And uh, we got the word from high above that you cannot do that at this event. Um, uh, Aisha, do you have any more clarity on uh, on that? And, and am I misspeaking? I, I think I got it right. That you are correct. So we are heavily, uh, it was heavily emphasized by leadership that we will not be allowed to have any giveaways or raffles. Um, so we appreciate you guys 
going along with that. Um, otherwise, I think we're good from that aspect, Steve. Uh, okay. All right. So, so folks, this is, again, I'm just reiterating this because I know how much you love putting together gift baskets and having little, you know, fish bowls on a table and collecting a hundred business cards. Number one, I just learned a lot of these people don't have business cards, these professionals that are going to be attending. So that makes it difficult. But number two, you just can't do it. Okay. So the, the, the thing is that, that I, that I, all of you all are very interesting people. You've got great organizations. You do wonderful work for these referral sources at Inova. That's what you're spotlighting today that at this event. And, and if you can try to spotlight it in a handful of, if not one, specifically customized eight and a half by 11, I know the, here's how we can help you. Um, you're, you're adding more confusion to your message. And so just really give it some thought. Okay. Um, all right. And, uh, Okay, so Sonia says, are we only allowed to hand out printed materials? Aisha, could, if somebody has a squeeze toy or something like that, are they allowed to have any of that stuff? We don't really want you to have that stuff, but are are, are we going to confiscate that or, or what's the deal? So it's not encouraged. I know our um, team members love pens, so pens should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're asking for is nothing too extravagant, such as like, I don't know, a t-shirt or something. I'm just like, to me, that's extravagant, I guess. Okay. So we just really want to keep um, the swag to a minimal. We want it to be more informative yep. more than anything. So if anything's giving out, it should be more so information and resources rather than just uh, items, if that makes sense. I, um, so great. pens are okay. We're okay with pens, but <laughs> please don't bring a boatload of pens either. <laughs> we uh, we learned from one of the Inova team members that they love pens. You, you know, and um, that kind of shocked me. I uh, I I didn't realize that. But th but if all of y'all bring pens, it's going to be too many pens. But but I guess let's use pens as an example of an appropriate giveaway. And, you know, I don't know, th these things are kind of cool. These, uh, you know, um, eyeglass cleaners, hand sanitizers, stuff like that. I mean, um, but again, like, let's build off the strengths of your organizations. Uh, nobody's going to call you because you, they, you gave them a pen. Uh, I've never called the number on a pen before ever. Okay. So um, uh, anyways, let's see. Uh, pen. Pens and post-its are my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, can we have sheets on the table for them to fill out? Yes. Okay. That. So, for example, um, you can have sheets. You can collect business cards, but just do not get caught trying to run a raffle. So the reason that people are going to give you their name and information is because you're going to follow up with them um, on on something. And um, uh, and uh, but that's good. So. Um, all right. Well, I've been we've been talking for a half hour. I want to you guys are are participating here. I want to make sure that you all have ample opportunity to are our cookies allowed or to be given a, out what do you think aisha um are cookies allowed to be given out that kind of competes with the food that you're paying for doesn't it yeah so please refrain from bringing any food products we all our conference center is only allows food from our own specific catering so please refrain from bringing any additional outside you know, you know, I'm saying this tongue in cheek, but you know what this this session and these and as we're talking about this, it's sort of like, you know, this is a beauty contest and you've got to play by the rules, man. Just have materials, nice logo, tablecloth and uh, and your great personalities. Yep, exactly. Um, all right. Um, 
I'm going to, uh, what, <laughs> uh, I think plastic stadium cups would be okay. Uh, somebody asked about that and, um, okay. Are banners allowed? Yes. But let me go back to my slide here. Okay. Um, cause I want to say something about the banners and, and, and we have not put together the floor plan yet, but, um, I want you all to think about your banners in terms of how you're going to use it for your marketing and being respectful to the other people in the room. So the first thing is the six, five, two foot table is, you know, not as big as some of the tables that at trade shows that we go to. So number one, if you're going to have a banner, you know, we don't want you bringing in that eight foot um, curved, state you know display that you got for the leading age event i think banners that are sort of the pull-up style and whether they sit on your table or maybe go behind your table but um you're really not going to have real estate outside of this table here okay it's six by, by two feet and it's probably about three feet off the ground and so you know if if you bring in some banner that you expect to sort of sit in front of your table or to the side of your table, you're going to be eating into other people's space. You're not going to make the Innova people very happy. And so just, you know, really think in, in, in those ways. And I know because I do this too, and I bought all this, this stuff. I know how you guys are thinking you spent, 300 bucks on this great banner and you feel like you got to use it at every single event that you go to when you leave your office. And this may, that banner may or may not be appropriate for this event. And what we're going to try to do, because we thought about this on our last call is, is that, you know, if we laid out the tables in aisles, that means that all these banners are blocking the tables behind them. So we're going to try to do something that might, enable banners to be against the wall or something like that. We've, we've got to really look at this puzzle and, and figure it out. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, looks like, a, uh, looks, looks like a Isha's, okay. Oh, uh, Tyrus asks, how many attendees should we plan for? As Aisha says, as of right now, we have 160 registered. This does not account walk-ins and also it's three weeks away so i'm pretty charged up that we could have potentially i mean just think about it guys 160 people that that are care managers or this that and the other if you told me that i could go to an event and there was 20 care managers at it i would you know be doing backflips um so uh so i'm thinking it's going to be 300 or less attendees, could be more, but I think if you're thinking of quantity, that's probably a safe um, a safe number. Um, and let's see, uh, okay, just wanted to clarify, vendors are not allowed to give any giveaway. No, no, vendors can give away pens uh, and, you know, stadium cups and, you know, little things to clean your eyeglasses in the spirit of that, you know, it's like stuff that's like a, a couple of bucks or less. We just can't have case managers walking out with custom designed teddy bears or gift baskets or bottles of wine and things like that. That's going to get everybody in trouble. Okay. Um, and no cookies are allowed to be given out. Um, let's see here. All right. Oh, sorry. Let me stop sharing. Okay. And, uh, oh, can we bring any equipment to the show? Okay. So like, I know Ollie's business, which is, um, safe and accessible design. I, I, I think it's going to be tough. I, and, and what I would say is this could change, but Ollie, knowing the Anova team being involved with this planning, it's one of the reasons we're doing this discussion we'll chat about this, but my, my hunch is with the, the types of equipment that you and, and Ray Patel have, it's best to just have some nice photos of your equipment 
And what I could also see, like, you know, with Ollie and Ray and some of the other providers that do like remodeling and things like that, I think it would be totally cool and appropriate to have like an iPad on your table or a, a laptop where you could show people um, some of the images of the things that you can do for people being discharged from the hospital. That that might be the best way to do it. Um, okay, uh, Missy is asking Aisha, will attendees have bags provided by the conference for the info they collect from the vendors? I don't think we've talked about that. Yeah, we haven't discussed that yet. Um, and uh, I know a lot of you have bags that you've produced with your logo on it. Um, we've got a meeting tomorrow. It might be a good idea for us to, we'll bring that up in our meeting and we'll do some follow-up on uh, whether the expo is going to have bags available um, for their attendees or whether um, we're going to, you know, and again, like I hate to even say, oh, hey, let's just have the vendors bring bags because all 100 of you are going to go out and buy bags and then we're going to have too many bags and we really want to make this an efficient operation for everybody. So, um, uh, and yeah, we're going to, um, the, the electrical outlets, uh, good question from Ali on that. We're, we're not positive on what that looks like either. Um, my, my gut level feeling and the reason why I said an iPad is, is that again, if I was in your all shoes, uh, I would definitely have an iPad loaded up with a bunch of my PowerPoints, a bunch of my images, testimonials, stuff like that. And your iPad is not going to run out of batteries between nine and two, your laptop might. Um, so, uh, Think about that um, and we'll do the best that we can. Um, and, uh, okay, let's see. Um, our vendors are allowed to give it out uh, tote bags and let we're, we're gonna make this a topic of our discussion tomorrow. I mean, um, on the bag thing and, and again, you know, I don't see, a, I, I look at like the little tote bags as something like this that you're giving out. They're inexpensive. They're not, there's no real value to them. We can all use them for our grocery shopping trips. But what we don't want to see is like beach tote bags being given out with your logo on it or anything like that. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, well, okay. Well, I think this was good. Uh, usually when I say something like that, then a few more questions come in. But um, I hope you found this helpful. I've done this uh, over the years for other events. I usually would do these live, you know, because they were pre-pandemic. And uh, I found this to be something like this to be helpful, not only for you all to make sure that your expectations are in check, but also for the organizer. Um, th these questions that you asked, we have not come up with some of them in our planning committee meetings. And so, uh, so it's great. The whole bag thing is, is really key for us to address that. Um, and I think some of the things that are hanging out there on our end is going to be, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, the the loading dock we we gotta dial that in our floor plan uh we're gonna figure out the bags um let's see uh leticia you mentioned bags to hold info that we get from each other can these be included as items or bring to, or no i you, you know i can see where it could be beneficial for you all to have bags but but let let's talk to our committee and we'll figure it out um scott says how about uh, wrapped candy, like small chocolates, you know, um, we'll, let's bring, we'll bring this up at the, the committee, but, but here's what's going to happen. I, I almost say like anything edible, just, just leave it at home. And, and, and we're going to make this a resource, a real honest to God resource fair. I know of us paying 
for food for their um for everybody and that's great and and my fear is is that if we say hey you can bring candy like small wrapped chocolates or breath mints then we're going to have 100 tables with small wrap candy and breath mints um and um but but we'll we'll talk about that one um okay um all right uh well aisha uh what do you think i think we're good i think uh we have a good idea <clears throat> sorry again under the water um we will be more in touch i think steve you're going to send out maybe a follow-up in terms of this recording for reference but also to understand who will actually be in attendance day of Yep. Um, and again, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to our Innova Post Acute Care Expo at innova.org. <laughs> and then if anything, Steve as well, because he's a really great resource that's been helping us. Um, and we really thank you and we look forward to your participation. All right, y'all. Um we're all we're all in this boat together, okay? And uh and I have no doubt that uh we're gonna all leave that day and there's gonna we're gonna learn a few things and it's gonna be like, hey, in the next one, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. But one thing I know just by seeing the lineup of all of these vendors that are attending and seeing the fact that we've that we're got 160 uh Anova referral sources and growing, that when we all get together and connect, we're gonna uh, be a powerful community and we're all going to make some some really interesting connections so um so okay so stay tuned uh we will follow up and if you haven't completed the resource directory link make sure to go back to my emails or find the one there in chat and fill that out and uh hopefully by the end of the week you're going to get a really rough draft of what that content in that directory is going to look like and then i'll need you to make changes to that um, so stay tuned and, uh, thanks a lot, everybody.